So how's it going guys, this is Rio Murata, photographer based in Tokyo. So Kodak Gold is my go-to film stock when I'm shooting with media format film. That's actually what I've used most of the time. However, I never had the time and energy to shoot it during the night and I thought it would be nice to sort of like allocate my time to sort of like shoot with Kodak Gold 200 120 media format film in downtown Tokyo. And one of the areas that I my smartphone just turned off but one of the areas that i just wanted to showcase you guys is that downtown shibuya area specifically has been going under a many many what you call constructions new buildings are being built and this has been the start ever since the hikari which you guys probably have heard was built i think 10 years ago if i'm right or five years ago and ever since that building famous for looking down on people not looking down on people but it's a fantastic location to just observe the Shibuya city itself. Many other buildings started popping out. Noteworthy ones is probably Shibuya Stream. And after that, Shibuya Scramble was established. Fukurase. Uh, and after that, this year in particular, Shibuya Sakura Stage was established last, last month or so, if I'm right. And I do not know much about the further details about this building in particular, but it is, it is another what I call multi-purpose building, which encompasses like office areas, shopping districts, which not many companies moved in yet. But I have heard a rumor that there's a lot of like illuminations going on around this area and also sculptures. So I thought it would be nice to test and see how Kodak Gold 200 would perform in this time of season when it's like cold and also when it's like lonely so i thought i should allocate some time to shoot with kodak gold 200 with my gw690 for your information the sakura stage also is sort of like a pathway gateway sort of like terminal where you can basically access the other side of shibuya meaning that if you guys know about shibuya there's basically a bunch of trains that passes through and in order to get from the west side to the east side you either in the past have to use some kind of underground like tunnel or you have to go way around it but this time around, because the Sakura stage was established, you can basically cross over to the other side and it basically connects to, I think, Shibuya Stream, if I'm right. So it makes that you know, daunting task of just walking around 
much easier and you can basically save a lot of time so that's another reason why this building was built so yeah after shooting you guys have guessed it kodak gold is as the name implies has this gold tone aka warmer tone and this becomes much more apparent when you're shooting in the night especially in this winter season because the yellows and the reds get more what i call overemphasized in my opinion and one of the weird things that started to happen when i was like shooting with Koda gold was after scanning and after importing that into you guys probably have guessed it i had to make youtube videos for you guys i used davinci resolve to sort of like showcase that my images that i shot from my scanner color edited it but when i actually imported into davinci resolve in the recent update something weird started to happen which is the colors got, got tinkered in a what you call a muted less saturated way and this is i'm still like working with, around with davinci resolve and i don't know what just happened but previously when i sort of like import my color like I'll edited photos into DaVinci Resolve, it basically reads 100% exact same color and outputs the exact same color. But right now, after the update, it kind of looks less muted in my opinion. And I'm basically tinkering around with the color space to see if I can fix that. So that's one problem that I'm hitting right now at the moment. I'm curious if anyone uses DaVinci Resolve, the recent update, the 18.6 or something, kind of mutes photos that you have shot into that you know video format so i need to fix that somehow so right now i basically like boosted the saturation in the video to give you guys sort of like a similar like look of what it actually looked prior to the scan and also in addition to that if i'm right uh when we compare this with pro 400h obviously during this winter season it becomes much more apparent cold out gold boosts that warm or tones while Fuji Pro 400 gives you a slightly quarter tone so this really depends on your perspective if you want a sort of like isolated look Pro 400 H was sort of like an alternative to Gold 200 however Pro 400 doesn't exist so the majority of people who shoot with medium format you're stuck with Portra 160 quote out Gold 200 or Portra 400 or 800 or maybe a Lomography which similarly have that warmer tone okay, at the same time there's this is like something really important i guess when shooting at night and that's basically the light source and this time around you guys probably have guessed it almost every like single object except for the restaurant area was leds and sakura stage was or is a relatively new what you call sculpture and also buildings which means that they use i guess the most recent leds that can be provided in the market because newer buildings tend to use better LEDs and the, the better the LEDs, what's the difference between a better LED and a worse LED is how it can reproduce that light source and in, in videography term, it's called CRI if I'm right, which is the standard deviation of how close that light source is closer to the sun and it, if I'm right, the sun is like CRI rating of 100, 100%. The closer it is to that target number, the closer it is that it looks natural to our eyes, what we see in the viewpoints and our perspectives. And video lights in particular have a higher CRI ratings because we want to reproduce exactly something similar to the sun. My light's roughly 96. It's typically 96, 97, 98 or so. The higher the number, I guess the cleaner the image will look. I'm going a little bit off topic, but this is educational for you guys. LEDs typically have that st sort of like standard deviation. The rec more recent ones and the higher quality ones is closer to like 96, 97, 98. However, the what you call the really old LEDs, like LEDs that were made like 10 years ago or 20 years ago when they started like producing, have a worse like a CRI rating, meaning that the worse it is, it kind of start starts like casting these weird tints tints as in magenta color or green color and sometimes when you shoot with your smartphone in a really sketchy area you get these like greenish cast or magenta-ish cache and this isn't the problem with a camera or the smartphone itself it's basically the light source and this is like something that we can never sort of like fix 
because the LEDs that's already installed in the you know sculptures and the building itself we can't change that unfortunately but if we understand like what kind of light source or what kind of LEDs they're using we can basically predict it beforehand because if it if you're like shooting a really sketchy area with bad lighting bad LEDs or the fluorescent lights that can create those casts it's really hard to remove those colors in post after we scan that you know film negatives put it into like digital format and it starts you know color correcting and I'm going a little bit off off topic but I mean if we understand that there might be that possibility that it's not worth to take that shot because film you're burning cash in reality so and because I'm using a GW690 which is really one of the most expensive cameras to shoot film with you only get eight exposures I can basically think and decide beforehand if it's worth shooting that shot or not but yeah, for the educational reasons, I basically talked about CRIs, which is like, you know, the standard for our color rendition. And from viewing the images, it looks really clean, meaning that the what I call the LEDs that were provided or used in the sculptures and also the building itself is like what I call the, I guess, one of the high tech kind of like recently made produced like products, meaning that the renditions, the reproduction rate of the colors is extremely close to like a video like that I'm using right now. So that's like one thing to point out for you guys. And yeah, it was actually a great experience like shooting with Kodak O200. I never have that much opportunity to shoot it at night, but I'm kind of confident to say that if you have perfect lighting, you will get great results. And this video kind of sort of like is uh, evidence to that. And yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions or if you have any inquiries related to this building or around in Shibuya, I'm happy to reply. I live in Tokyo right now. And yeah, and a lot of people are giving me questions via Instagram because I guess people like to ask questions there. And I basically are either on commenting on YouTube platform or Instagram. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. And if you have any yeah problems, <laughs> as long as I'm like free, I can basically like reply to them all. So yeah, we will see you next time. Peace out and keep on shooting.